What's up, guys? You be sending from Motorsports here, and after such a long time, yeah, it's been friggin' ages over two months, in fact. After such a long time, welcome back to another Skyrim video. As you can see, it's a pretty damn gorgeous day uh, to begin our journey along the moon paths to elsewhere. I'm so excited to get this mod finally underway after, you know, just such a freaking long time trying to get this episode, you know, the various parts, the intro, you know, the sort of prologue bit and everything else produced. I'm hoping, really, that this is sort of the final take because I had to do another take yesterday that really wasn't up to scratch. Anyway, so, we've got the uh, various members of the Killer Awesome Death Squad right here. Um, you can see Carjo, or, well, you could have seen Carjo, our very loyal Khajiit friend who's been following us since literally day one. The very first episode is also of uh, the old Skyrim mods is also uh, Kajo's first um, episode. Um, we've got Kriju here, who I'm not sure I've introduced to you before. I talked about her in my uh, previous update video, but basically she is the definition of awesome. Um, she's a Spriggan, friendly Spriggan follower, yeah. Now that is pretty freaking crazy when you think about it. And over here we've got uh, Serana, the awesome, awesome follower that you get with the uh, Dawn Guard add-on. And it's about, I'm not sure what time it is, Let, what, what time is it? Um, it is 6.47pm, so just about the right time to uh, get started on our journey, journey along the moon paths and see what the Thalmer are up to invading elsewhere. Um, I know Karjo's really, really gonna like this. It's gonna be so, so awesome. Uh, yeah, he was with me on my previous playthrough too. Speaking of uh, previous playthroughs, I've played through this mod about uh, three and a half times now, two, two or three, three and a half, so I definitely am an experienced uh, moon pather, um, to coin a new term there, um, and I have had technical issues with this mod before, I'm going to warn you about that. Now this is um, version 0 0.82 beta, which was released late, late last year, and I think it was pretty late last year. It's a pretty old version, but I couldn't get uh, 0.95 beta to work, so I had to downgrade to through the old uh, the old version. The only thing that changes really is the uh, start location is here, um, just west of Falkreath, rather than in the Dead Man's Drink in, which is actually in uh, Falkreath, and also it doesn't come with the nasty bug of the Kashi being unable to talk and you being unable to therefore start the quest. So this is sort of the best stable version that I have. Um, so these guys should talk. Or not. Uh, okay then. Hold on. I'm going to uh, do some poking around with the uh, load order of the mod files and I will be back with you shortly. Jump cut! And we're back! I just had to sort of revert to an older save. Um, anyway, yeah, that's one of the many, many bugs with Moonpath Elsewhere, unfortunately. You're gonna get a lot of these because it's such a huge mod, and um, it was worked on by such a massive team, but when it does actually get working, that's why... <laughs> let's just say that's why I consider it my favorite mod of all time, and you guys are going to see exactly why when I press enter. It is so strange. Kajit will step on the warm sands of our homeland soon. I am Karina. What should I call you? 
Now you see, that's voice acting. That's so rare in a mod. Um, yeah, in a, in a Skyrim mod. It's crazy how rare that is. So that's just one sort of heads up of how awesome this mod is going to be anyway. Yeah, they call me Dovahkiin. Oh, son of Agathosh. Yes, Kajit has heard the thunder of your voice. It is an honor to meet you, Dragonfall. One of these moon paths. Hmm. Sam Ranierch kept a journal about her travels. Should you find it, you will know. You can read, yes. Can I join your co your Red caravan? Grand traveler, you wish to travel, then travel. No ask, but do. But ask my mate first. Okay, sure. And so starts the quest. Verena, your Karana's mate. Uh, the dialogue in this mod is so awesome. I'm interested in traveling to elsewhere. True, but that's why that's what makes Skyrim so awesome. So can I join you? Serana. Okay, um, how do you travel, by the way? Okay. Well then, let's actually get underway. Carjo is standing at, standing at the carriage saying, Dude, now he's running into the carriage! <laughs> he's saying, Dude, can we just go? <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> Carjo, you're a little bit eager, are you? <laughs> oh, okay, so where are we now? And by the way, yes, I'm going to try to play this like I've never, um, actually play Moonpath to elsewhere before I'm going to try and at least show you what my um, initial reaction was. And at, that, at this stage, this is pretty like, this is pretty much like, damn, this is a pretty nice place. I like the uh, sand swirling around here. That's a, that's a pretty cool detail. Um, oh, what is that? Uh, what do we have here? Okay. Hyenas, yep. Ready. And then... Okay, wow, that did a lot of damage. Uh, with that, whatever that is, that... Thing that makes the sound of a deer. There's another one behind you! Hello! Hello! Hi! Hello! Could you at least try to... F attack the hyena? Maybe help me out a little bit, try to save your ass? Thank you. Let me just walk over there and stare at that rock. That's perfectly fine. Um... No, uh... Yeah, what... What... Seriously, what was that about? Hyenas and then attacking this, uh, Therium is... I think that's what this is called? I'm not too sure. Um... Krona. What's going on? Why have we stopped? Our path is blocked. Perhaps someone should take a look. Uh, good idea. I'll go ahead. Red softy, friend. These roads are filled with brigands. Our Thalmal overlords are more interested in heretics than bandits. Okay, you hear that, Killer Awesome Death Squad? Uh, brigands and heretics. Uh, so, yeah. Best to sneak up to this place. The first time I played this mod, I just basically went charging in blindly. And Karjo just chased after me, and we did some good damage, but we can do a little bit better here. Ready, and... Shit. I was looking down to make sure I was ready. Completely forgot that, uh... <laughs> my weapon would be invisible. Okay, oh, ready, and then... Bandit Marauder. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, just a couple more sneak attacks on this guy. Come on. No, missed. Damn it. Okay, you're just gonna stick your head through that there. Fine by me. Man, you guys are idiots. How are you not seeing Kreeju at least? And you are unarmed! You're a bandit marauder with fists! Well then, anyone else? Anyone else? That guy. Rainier's gang leader. Seriously, these sneak attacks are doing some serious damage on these guys. What was that block by? Come on! You know, we've got 85 of these things left. It's not like we're exactly low on ammo, so... Let's see what we have here, what we can loot. Rainier's gang leader. 83 gold, not not bad for pickup. Um, lock pick and one of my steel bolts back. Um... Anything else? Any other chests? There's one. Likely gonna contain... Oh, crap. Hi! Hello! Yeah, you just run against the tent there. That perfectly suits me. Game crash! How fun! <laughs> uh, obviously jump cut back in a sec. Okay, well then, that was uh, interesting. In any case, for some random reason, I have decided to um, try to redo that fight. Because that was pretty interesting how dumb the AI was. <laughs> Our path is blocked. Perhaps some dread safety friend. These ruins are filled with brigands. Okay, yes, okay, brigands and heretics and yes, shit. Oh god. Uh yeah, I didn't mean to curse there, but oh sugar. Yes, I am slowly turning into Kurt J. Mac. Oh sugar. Yeah, heretics and brigands and hyenas that will relentlessly attack you and cause all of your uh, squad members to go completely ape shit. Uh, ape poo, I should say. Um, anyway, yeah, because I'm trying to move away from the whole swearing thing because, you know, I just think it makes videos less funny. So, we're going to deal with that guy, and then the bandit marauder is going to stand there with his axe while his friend bleeds out. You know, was... Okay, so he's just going to run into that pole there. This is the old version, remember? I don't think they do that in the newer versions. Like, uh, for instance, .95. So, yeah, because I think they have some uh, AI tweaks. Could be mistaken, though, but... Okay, what's this guy going to do? Uh, he's just going to run over there and look at his dead friend. And I'm going to take advantage of his melancholy and kill him. And... Yeah, the, Re the Rainier's gang leader here. One to the gut should have killed him, but then again, this is Skyrim. <laughs> now, for this other rude dude. Yeah, that one. Just one of these bulls should do. Yep! And... Very exciting indeed. I would go loot their corpses, but I don't want another game crash. By the uh, by the way, um, that was not Moonpath Tales were causing that. That was uh, probably the fact that I have a crap ton of mods, like um, a, hundreds of them, literally. Uh, even though I've only got like 15 or 20 activated, but that's still way more than you should have activated at any one time. Um, but yeah, so having that many mods active is going to cause some problems with your game. And that's not just uh, Moonpath to elsewhere. So, I'm not going to look at the hyenas. Karana, the bandits are no more. When to he has no reason to be. The sand will bury their shame. Okay. Get in the carriage and continue the journey to elsewhere.
Continue onward. Hmm. So I have this one thing that I was going to talk about. Uh, yeah. I can't really remember what it was. Karana. It seems this bridge has collapsed. I'll scout ahead for a waiting point. You are very useful, my friend. We will wait here and offer to little thought. We will speak with the moons and the forests in our sweet dreams. Okay. Now uh, you just sit there and have a mug and we'll go around and see if there's a waiting point. Which my um, game is kindly pointing out to me that there is on the compass. Can I jump up here? No. In fact... Ah, uh, come on. I can get over that. There we go. And then... Go around here. Go around here? Yes. No. Up here. Oh, hello. And wow, you jumped a foot in the air, but you're still alive somehow. Well, you've been taken care of. I can hear another one over... Well, another three... Two or three. Yeah. You're a hatchling. How do you have more health than your your jungle queen fruit mother thing? I don't know what you call them. Okay. Now stealth mode, please. Where are the other members of the Killer Awesome Death Squad? There's Creed you. Running in to provide some uh up and some up close support. She usually does. See, that's why she's so awesome. That, and she's completely invincible. Um, she's essentially, well, well, essential. So, when she, uh, gets killed, quote-unquote, uh, she'll just sort of squat down on one knee and, uh, stand back up when her health is sort of recovered. So, um, Karana. I found a ford down the river as strong currents, but it should be fine. Oh yes, no worries. Our moon cow is heavy. We feed them with no more droppings, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where do we go next? The Palmar have invited you to their jungle. This is rare, but it seems they have been expecting you. Hmm. We will bring you there to meet them before the day breaks. Okay, sounds good. Uh, get in the carriage and get dropped off at Tinmar Forest. Travel on to the heart of Tinmar Forest. Now, Tinmar Forest is basically the uh, most awesome, freaking sort of natural um, hideout, uh, sort sort of player house that you can that you could possibly ever have. It's just you ought, you ought to see it. It's like everything you've seen in this mod up to this point, you know, as far as just a, a static amazingness, kicked up to like 56. Yeah, it's just... Starts off not too, you know, pretty innocuously. You're, stand, you're staring at a green wall and a tiger. Um, those are the Pamar, sort of your guards. And then you look over here and holy crap, look at that! Whoo! Boy! <laughs> uh, there's also this uh, Yura here. Who are you? What are you? Th what is this place? Hmm. Amir, where is she? So, I would ask you more questions, but I'm afraid my companions are going to shove me of my death. So, yeah, I'm just going to bugger off. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Pride Rock. Mm-hmm. Pretty damn cool. Look at this. We even got a winch thing. Not, what is that? Hmm. Anyway, so... Yeah, it's uh, about the most relaxing place in the entire world. Look at this. In fact, listen to this as well. I'm going to uh, 
shut up for a second and let you listen to the all the sounds that they've managed to incorporate here. If I can just sort of get away from Kreeju with her buzzing noise. Yeah, and the music is just really what sets it off. It is absolutely gorgeous and atmospheric as crap. I don't know how to, just, how to describe it. It's just dripping with this. Well, you feel it. It's just, th it's just this sort of deep jungle relaxation feel that's really, really hard to describe. And uh, this is your uh, sort of master bed shack. Um, you got your bed, your uh, arcane, your uh, alchemy lab, your arcane channer, your golden pole with a grand soul gem, and a danger heart. Both very rare pickups indeed. And this thing with magical liquids in it. Um, also, your uh, wardrobe. A couple of wardrobes, actually, and uh, your master locked chest. Whew. Yeah, just sort of the perfect place to come and relax and just sort of take a chill pill. Also, don't mind the low, uh, the slightly lower textures than, than you're used to. I had Raptor optimize my game so it dropped the texture quality a little bit. So I'm sure you probably noticed that some of the most, some of the more uh, eagle-eyed of you, but yeah, and, uh, and down there you've got uh, sort of your writing desk uh, meets your uh, dining table and steel plate gauntlet table. So yeah, it's pretty much got everything. And uh, I, I took the plate, meaning to move forward. That's where that, that happens when you have a new keyboard. So, inventory, please. Uh, plate. Steel plate, I think it was. Yes, scroll down. It's going to be in junk, ain't it? It's a plate of some sort. Hmm. Strange. Yeah, a plate. There we go. Just gonna drop that. And that's going to not do anything. And we're just going to... Can we... Not take it? No. <laughs> oh! And it was... Serana, that's my chair! Get off! Look, I'm crossing my arms at you. I'm very disappointed in you, Serana. Uh, okay. Anyway, bookshelves. Pretty much all the, uh, sort of compulsory stuff. Uh, reading chairs. Uh, even, uh, Pamar guards. To protect you and everything. And Serana's gonna steal my chair again. Do it, I dare you to do it again, Serana. Because I really can't do anything against you. Also, what is this? It's an egg. Hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, and over here you have your forge and everything, so as you can see, this is a uh, fully equipped house uh, thing, hideout deal. And, um, yeah, you got your, uh, like I said, your forge, your display case, your uh, mannequins, your uh, weapon rack, and your uh, chest for miscellaneous stuff. And you can, you can of course, sort of explore this area. It's got quite a few places that don't really serve a point, but they're pretty damn cool nonetheless. And I somehow ended up on the other side of that rope there. Um, anyway, like, uh, I believe it's over here? Um, ish? No, it's... Oh yeah, it's over here where this guy's pulled up his, uh, boat. And, um, he's sort of, uh... He's sort of... Well, he's a moon sugar dealer, so I don't really like dealing with him that much. And to top it all off, you've got your grind wheel uh, here and Ethereum, uh, which, well, as they call them in Moonpath, they also are a moon cow. So you've got those, and also a couple of assorted river crabs. So really, as you can tell, just wrapped in 
a crazy nice package. I really, really like this place. You got birds flying around, the sound of the wilderness and, and everything, and it's just all very, very atmospheric and enjoyable. And yep, that is the first part of Moonpath to Elsewhere. In the next part, we are going to proceed into the waterways of Elsewhere, I believe it is, and uh, do things there, over there. So I'm going to park Kreju so I can let you guys enjoy the sounds and sights of the uh, Pride Rock hideout as I leave you guys for this part. Listen to this amazing soundtrack. The music really sells it. Just the sounds of everything and mannequins randomly placed on top of things. So yeah, that has been the first part of Moonpath to Elsewhere. I'm so glad that I finally got this damn thing done. It's been such a headache. But it's going to be so awesome, and it's definitely going to, definitely, definitely going to be worth all the effort. So, yeah. Uh, if you like this video, you know, do all your stuff. Like, uh, thumbs, uh, thumb it up, it really helps. If you liked it, uh, comment, fave, subscribe, uh, comment and fave and subscribe, and go over to the Nexus and give Moonpath Elsewhere a big old download. And a big ol' endorsement, even though it's already been featured, so I don't think that serves much of a purpose. But endorse anyway, because it's freaking awesome. Uh, and, yeah, do all that, and I will see you guys in the next video. GP75! Out! I just had to let you guys listen to that. So, yeah, GP75, out!